Well, good evening, everyone. Probably having dinner. I'll get adjusted or getting home. But I'm just going to come on for a little while and share. Um, kind of like a continuation from last week um, when we talked about self examination. Not going to be on here long. Just going to wait and allow people to get um, connected. Hope everyone had a wonderful Monday. I had a good day. Hello, hello, Hope. How are you? Hope you are well. It is the day the Lord has made, so I'm just excited because I'm a part of what God wants to do, even this evening. Um, I titled this Roots Birth Fruit because it's true. Um, it's true. You know, we talked last week about self-examination and how it's necessary for us to look at our motives, why we do what we do, why we say what we say. Hey, Gwen, why we um, react to certain things the way we react to them, why we respond to people the way we respond, why we respond to situations in our own lives the way we respond to them. Roots birth fruit. So we also talked about um, how Jesus said that by the fruit, what a person produces will know whether they're his or not. Well, I want to talk on a similar vein but different because I still want to deal with the heart because all of this is revolving around our heart and the condition of our heart, which is producing fruit, whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. And I want to look at this scripture uh, in Luke 6, 43, and I'm going to read um, three verses. It says, for a good tree bringeth forth bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush do they gather grapes. For every tree is known by what? Its own fruit. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Now he goes from talking about trees bringing forth fruit to talking about people's heart. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that what is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings bringeth forth that what is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then in Proverbs 4.23, it says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. So we produce from what's in us. We can't help it. It's in us. We're going to manifest or produce or reproduce what's on the inside of our hearts. Now, many people will say, oh, I came to Jesus and I gave my life to the Lord and all that's over. But we still have things that are deep in our hearts that we have not dealt with. And I call those the roots that birth fruit. So when we look at um when we look at this word, it confirms, the Bible confirms what it's saying. So Luke 6 is telling us it's a there's a surplus in our hearts. And out of that there's a manifestation. Now I asked God to give us some type of way to tie that in. Um, how can we tie that in to where we are right now in this scripture? How do we make sense of this? And I looked at um, trees because that's kind of what he was talking about. He said, you don't pick a certain thing off a fig tree. And I was going to do this other scripture, but the Lord said, no, just keep it simple. So let's look at trees. Trees have what? Roots roots. When a tree is planted in the ground, the first thing it does is it starts to go down, dig its roots. Roots have a purpose. Roots have a purpose. The purpose of the roots is to stabilize the tree, to ground the tree, to secure the tree, to nurse for the tree to get nourishment. The tree will develop from the roots and from the nourishment it receives from outside sources, the soil, um, um, fertilizer, sunshine, all those things go in to um, 
causing the tree to have good roots. So if you plant a tree in bad soil, in soil that is not nutrient rich, you're going to get some deformed fruit. If you take no time, do no fertilizing, you guys know, you've seen trees growing, you go pick fruit, you get fruit from the store, and sometimes you get some funny looking fruit. You see some. Well, that's because there hasn't been any cultivating, any nourishing, any development, any fertilizing of this fruit. They also, the roots also store things. So when you see trees that don't have anybody maintaining them, they use storage, a storage system huh? that, hallelujah, that what they do is they gather what they need and they keep a hold of it until it's time to release it into the whole tree so that they can use that to sustain themselves or whatever they need to respond to. And then they also, roots also cause reproduction. Roots, good roots bring good fruit. But if I have bad roots, weak roots, roots that are damaged, I'm going to have bad fruit. Sometimes trees will have no fruit. And there's a story in Luke 13 about a gardener, you know, a dresser. Well, he's really a pruner. And it says that the man had a tree in his vineyard and there was no fruit on it. He said, well, let's just get rid of it. He said, no, let's just dig around it and put some good fertilizer on it so that it can bear fruit. Well, I want you to know today that sometimes it's not just what we put on the soil. It's what's in our hearts that are causing our problems. And God is concerned tonight about the hearts of his people and what we're seeing and what we're witnessing and what we're experiencing and how we're handling, how we're responding, the things we're saying, the things we're thinking. All those things deal with our roots. Yes, we have roots. We're like that tree. We need, we come into Christ. We need stability and support. We need nourishing. We need fertilizing, the nourishing of the word, the washing of the regeneration of the word of God. We need that to stabilize us. We need it to cultivate us, to purify us. But many times we're not dealing with the underlying issues that proceed out of our hearts. I want to talk about some trees. I did some research and I found some trees. I saw Apostle Eckhart, he had posted this, um, he was doing a teaching on bitterness. Because bitterness is prevalent in the body of Christ. You ever see people that are just hateful? They just, they just hateful. Say nasty things. I mean, it doesn't matter what you say or do. The people are just, you can tell they're just bitter. Well, bitterness has a root. There is an underlying cause for people's bitterness. And I want you to look at this tree. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to hold it up. Can you see that tree? That's the tree of bitterness. This tree, this tree has the main root is unforgiveness. We deal with that a lot in the body because we get hurt. We get hurt. We've been hurt. We hurt others because we're hurt. But the underlying reason is we don't forgive. We must forgive, beloved. We have to forgive ourselves. You know, I was talking to a young uh, a lady today, and I was and I was praying with her, and all the Holy Spirit kept saying is unforgiveness, un unforgiveness. And this is a big issue for us in the body of Christ. It leads to so many other things. But let's look at the tree. The tree has branches. It has branches, beloved. Look at this. If I have anger towards myself and God or others, it leads to hatred. It leads to rage, wanting revenge, violence, resentment, and even murder. Whether I do these things physically or with my mouth, I speak it. But the real thing that I need to do is forgive. I need to forgive others. I need to forgive myself. I need to forgive God because look at this. We were talking, the lady and I, and I said, you remember the scripture where Mary and Martha were talking to Jesus about Lazarus, their brother that died. And they said, well, Lord, if you would have been here, blame. 
our brother wouldn't have died. Don't we blame God for stuff? Lord, if you would have intervened, if you would have stepped in, or if when we are uh, mad at ourselves, oh, I should have did this. I wish I would have. If I would have only. Come on, beloved. We need to be real with ourselves because healing, healing can happen. But it must first be that we expose ourselves to God huh, so that he can bind up our broken heart huh, and set at liberty those that are bruised. It's not going to just drop out the sky below. We got to be real with ourselves. God wants us to deal with our roots. Roots bring fruit. They birth it. Whether they're good or evil. And I'm going to tell you, if you go on and read in Luke 645, if you read the next thing, it talks about how many going to say on that day, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that? Didn't we? Didn't we? Didn't we? And he's going to say, depart from me. Hey, hallelujah. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never enter. You never let me deal with your heart. Huh? You never let me in. Huh? You kept me out and you just used my name huh, to make fame. Oh, God, help us today. Help us. Help us. God is concerned, beloved. Look at this. Look at this. When we have unforgiveness, it leads to all those things. And then from those branches, Twigs happen. Twigs, little offshootings. Let's look at some of them. Family feuds just can't get along in the family. Nobody, nobody can get along. Can't come together and eat Thanksgiving together. Can't, can't break bread no kind of way together. Can't have no birthday party because it's going to end up in a fight. Because we don't forgive. Because we don't forgive. Alcoholism. Drug addictions. A lot of it is Held in resentment, hurt, because you've been hurt, so you want to drown your sorrows. I use drugs. I understand. I was trying to mask my hurt, but you can't. I had to forgive people and allow Jesus to heal me. Nicotine addiction. Come on, witchcraft. A lot of people turn to witchcraft because they won't forgive. They're hurt. People have hurt them. Road rage. I should just put the paper down, huh? Because y'all know. Come on, sanctify folks be getting road rage for real. Cancer. Unforgiveness. Now, I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but it happens for some. Heart problems. Sugar diabetes. Blindness. Gluttony. Fighting. Accusations and retaliations. Beloved, this all happens because of bitterness and the inability or the, or the, not inability because we have the ability. Holy Spirit is our helper. He will help us forgive. All we have to do is ask him to help us. If we have people in our lives that we need to forgive, we need, it's a choice. We need to ask Holy Spirit to help us forgive, help us to release them from the debt we think they owe us. And that's what forgiveness does. It pardons them. It wipes the debt clean. It's not like they didn't do it, but what you do is you release them from it. Any penalty and from it's a legal term, any penalty and any future, any future debt. They don't owe you an apology. Don't wait on it, beloved. Don't wait on people to apologize for you to forgive them. Jesus was on the cross dying and they were walking by him, wagging their heads, talking about him, saying that you said you was this and you said you was that. Let's see who you are now. Saying all these derogatory things about him. And what happened? He said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. They were ignorant. He forgave them because they were ignorant. We need to forgive people. Whether they do it on, did it on purpose or did it by accident. We need to forgive ourselves because we need to release ourselves from who we used to be. From not having it all together. From not knowing everything. We need to forgive God because it wasn't his fault. Hey, hallelujah. It wasn't his fault. He didn't do it on, he didn't do it. It. The thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. He has come that we might have life and that more abundant. Put the blame where it belongs, beloved. If it's us, we need to say, Lord, here it is me. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. 
But if it's someone else, we need to just forgive them, beloved. Choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. That's what you have to say. And you have to practice that. How do you know that you've forgiven them? When you see them, you don't feel nothing up in here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When you see them, when you see them, you can hug them, you can embrace them, you can love them, and nothing, nothing turns in here. You don't feel some kind of way. <laughs> but that's true forgiveness, beloved. We have to release people and allow the Lord to deal with them. He said, vengeance is mine. I'll repay. What are we supposed to do? Love, forgive. Show mercy. Do you know that unforgiveness is the only sin in the Bible where tormentors are released to torment us? That's where some of these sicknesses come in at. Because there are sicknesses where your body attacks itself. Arthritis, not out in every case. I'm going to give a disclaimer. Arthritis, sugar, diabetes, um, and uh, some cancers. Cancer is where your cells attack each other. Well, so many times it's beloved because we haven't forgiven people. We haven't forgiven. We need to release people and they go and be healed, be whole. Ask God to help us. Show us who we need to forgive so we can forgive and move on. I'm going to hold up another tree. You see that one? The tree of sexual sin or sexual perversion. This is a big tree in the body too, unfortunately, I have to say that, but it is. Because there's a lot of what I do in the dark, nobody will know. So I can go ahead and keep sneaking around and, I, and nobody will catch me. But the Holy Spirit is there. He's there while we're doing our dirt. He's there while we're in the midst of the acts. He's there no matter what, he's there. We're not doing it secretly. Because, in, 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 let me tell you something, what we do in secret it's going to be exposed to the light. So something's going to happen to manifest what's been going on. Look at it. The root of this tree of sexual sin is lust. That's the root. Un, 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 just desires that are just ridiculously out of control. Out of desires that you just burn for. Things you just, I just have to have it. I just have to have that. Lust. Then fornication and fornication. Let me help you out here. Let's, let's talk about it. Fornication is just not between a man and a woman. Fornication deals with all sex. Man and man, woman and woman, and man and animal. I mean, however, not, however perverse the sin is, that's what it deals with. It deals with all sexual intercourse. No matter who it's between. And it, it deals with it in the way that it is not pleasing to God. So let's look at this. So we have the, brain, the trunk deals with destruction. Because sexual sin leads to destruction in some form. There's guilt. People commit suicide because they can't stop doing stuff. They want to stop. It's been driving them. They want they want to let it go. They want to quit. They don't want to do that anymore. And the guilt and the shame of it drives them to kill themselves because they want to be free, but they don't know how to. Then look, death, jealousy, hatred, and again, here we go with sexual sin. So there's fantasies. There's um, condemnation comes again. We were talking about the shame of how I feel uh, after I've done things, peer pressure, masturbation, evil thoughts, vulgarity, just pornography. These are things that happen because of lust, lust, lust births sin. So we can be, we, we can be driven by our hunger and our desire. You know what happened with David King David should have been out to war with other kings. That's what he was supposed to be doing. But he ended up out looking out the window and saw Bathsheba. And what did it drive him to do? It led him and drove him to not only take another man's wife, but he ended up killing this woman's husband because he was trying to cover up his sin. So, beloved, lust can take us a long way from God. He had to repent. 
And that's the solution, beloved. Repentance, turning from the sin and turning to God. Not, not this pity pat stuff, but serious repentance, serious being sorry, asking Holy Spirit and God. And you may need to get help. You may need to go outside of church or your circle or whatever and get some help to overcome this sin. Because this sin leads to what? Death and destruction. Let's look at another one that's really prevalent in the church right now. You see that one? It's the tree of pride. Pride, beloved, pride. And you know what the main root of that tree is? Deception. Because pride makes me think I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't need any help. I have it right. Everybody else is wrong, but I'm good. Not so, beloved. We're not good. We're not good. When we've elevated ourselves, we're not good. Let's look at some more of this tree. Pride, ego, leads to criticism. People always criticizing everybody else. Everything somebody does, you got a critical word, a negative word. You can't say anything positive. Religion. Oh, being religious. That'll do it. Being important, I want to be above others. I want to be better than every. I want to be. I want to be elite. Help us, Jesus. Jesus was lowly and meek. Domination, want to rule. Legalism, want to put rules on people. Traditions, huh? We have to do it this way. This the way it's always been done. We have to do it this way. I remember for years we uh, we wore gloves. I ain't knocking nobody if you're still doing it. I'm not. Trust me. But I got free from that. We wore gloves when we did communion because for some reason we thought that wearing a glove was like, you know, holy and all of that. But beloved, I, I had a revelation when I was making, putting, I used to be a deaconess. And when I was putting the juice in the cup and I was putting the stuff on the plate, I didn't have no gloves on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I wasn't wearing gloves and nobody else was wearing gloves. You know what I mean? We weren't wearing gloves when we put the things on the plate. So there was nothing but tradition and legalism involved in wearing those gloves. But we got to be free, right? And Christ is the one that sets us free, right? So this tree of pride, this tree of pride works out in um, perfectionism. Witchcraft, uh, shyness, and a lot of people say, oh, I'm so shy, I'm too timid to do that. That's a form of pride, honey, because what we're saying is we know best for ourselves. We know the right way. That's pride. False doctrine, arrogance, uh, self-righteousness unteachableness people can't don't listen to anybody else's teaching don't you can't tell them anything you can't show them anything prayerlessness this is big in the body of christ i read my bible why do i need to pray because we need to connect with the holy spirit because holy spirit searches the deep the deep things of god and reveals them unto us and how will we know what the will and the plan and the purpose of god is for our life if we never sit down and talk to him then God uses prayer for us to come alongside of him and do things in the earth. So prayerlessness is a big issue in the body and it's from that root of pride, independence, guilt, self-idolatry. Oh, we could just put a pen right here. Self-idolatry, idolizing self. I take 500 selfies a day and I post them. Every post is a selfie, just me. Come on, beloved, we got to grow up in this thing. Jesus said he didn't see, he didn't come to seek any reputation for himself. When he healed people, he said, "Don't even tell anybody that I did it." But on Facebook, we posting everything. If we give a can of food away to a hungry person, we got to make us, we got to take a picture with them post it or we got to do a live stream and I'm fixing to get this can of food away. You have your reward just by your post. There's no other reward for you. That's it. 
because we seek reward from men. Pride, beloved. Pride is messing us up. Hypocrisy. Fantasizing we're somebody that we're not. Hey, hallelujah. Competition. Big in the body of Christ. Big. Unfortunately, big. We're compete, we compete with one another. There's no competition. Everybody has gifts. Holy Spirit gives the gifts severally as he will. That means there's no other person like you. You are unique. You are an individual. God wants to use you and not like he's using Sister Sally or Brother Joe. He wants to use you just like you are. You do not need to be a carbon copy of anybody else. Just be who God called you to be. Let's go on. The tree of rejection. Big in the body. And you know, let me say this as a disclaimer. Prophetic people deal with this a lot. Rejection. Deal with this spirit a lot. Rejection. It's, and it's rejection of you rejecting rejection of self, fear of reje fear of being rejected. You just don't go to things and say, well, they ain't going to like me anyway. If I go, nobody's going to talk to me. Well, if I go, uh, I, I don't know. I better not go because uh, people don't like me or I'm this, that, and the other. You know, fear of people not wanting to connect with you. That's reject self-rejection, beloved. And then rejection comes when you do put yourself out there and people reject you. That's not on you. That's on them. And what we can do is allow that to stop us from being who God called us because he's accepted us. He said we are accepted in the beloved. Huh? He's accepted us. Huh? He's handpicked us. He's molded us in his image and after his likeness, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. So we don't have to worry about anyone rejecting us. That's their loss. That's how I look at it. I'm sorry if you don't, I don't make anybody try to connect. Like, oh, they don't want to connect. It's okay. Move on. Not my assignment. I look at things like assignments. If I connect with a person, it's for an assignment. Whether it's a friendship, whether it's a, a council, whether whatever it is, ministry, uh, just go to movies, have some coffee. I mean, whatever it is, because we're going to end up talking about something. Some ministry going to go on in during that, whether they minister to me or I'm ministering to them, those things happen. But what we can't do is allow rejection, the fear of rejection and re the rejection of ourselves to rule our lives. Because from there it comes, the trunk is paranoia. We're getting paranoid. We're worried about everything. Well, I better not wear that. So-and-so might say something. They might look at me funny. I better not do that. We get paranoid about things that don't matter. And then what we do? Isolate ourselves. Isolation. Oh, never go nowhere because we're afraid. We're afraid of being rejected. Depression. Because when I'm in my in a dark place alone, the enemy, what's he doing? Nobody likes you. I told you, you should stay here with me. I'm going to comfort you. And what usually happens? Those people get depressed and they commit suicide because they feel all alone. They're, they lose their hope. And what we have to do is we have to be careful. And some of us don't even notice them because they the ones that's over in the corner or um all by themselves, far away from everybody else. I look for those people. I do. Whenever I go into a big setting, like I look for the loner. That's what they used to call them uh, when we were growing up in school. They called them loners. I look for those people because I try to pull them in and let them know you have a place here. Huh? You're wanted here. You're welcome here. And that's what we, that's how we overcome and help others overcome rejection. Let's look at it a little more mental illness and schizophrenia. Why? Because we spend, they spend a lot of time alone listening to who? The enemy and not God. So it can come from Satanism, shock, shock tactics, people scaring them over and over, hate, shyness, again, fantasy lust, self-destruction. This is what it leads to. Worthlessness, manipulation, 
withdrawal, moodiness, obsessions, rebellions, delusions, daydreaming, because you're dreaming of another life, resentment and despair. People get hopeless, beloved. Let's be on the lookout. If you don't suffer from rejection or you don't have the fear of rejection, look for people who do and pull them in. Don't let them stay there. Paul, we are our brother's keepers. We are supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. Huh? We're supposed to grab their hand and pull them in and help them to walk this thing out. We can't be self-centered and self-focused. I got a couple more and then, I, and then we're done. I want us to look at this tree. Can you see this one? This is the family or ancestral tree. Some things come through ancestral lines. Some things come through a parents or grandparents or those that have um, preceded us. Uh, the Bible calls them the sins of the father. But here's the thing. Jesus bore every curse. <laughs> yeah, he who he hung on the tree, he who knew no sin became sin so we could become the righteousness of God. He bore every curse, every sin on the tree. And curses cannot come unless they have the legal right to do so. The legal right to do so. I think my little, I'm talking, I'm pulling a little light out. That's okay. You can still see me. But let's look at this tree. This tree can contain word curses. People said bad things about you or are still saying them. You'll never be nothing. You're just like your daddy. No good. This, that, 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 that. You'll never achieve it. You'll never make it. Uh, use this or you or that. Call you all out your name. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. I remember one time my mother was pressing my hair. I love my mother dearly. Trust me. I, I love that woman. She was pressing my hair and she called me a fat cow. It hurt me to the heart. It cut me. It did something to me inside. And so I guess I just began to manifest that thing because I just began to eat a lot. I just began to eat a lot. And I got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm not blaming that on her because now I have con I have to control. I have the Holy Spirit to help me with some self-control and go to this gym and work out and get some of this fat off my tail. So you know what I'm saying. But words have power and the things we speak over our children and our grandchildren, we don't know how that's going to affect them in the future. Look, covenant, breaking covenants, emotional issues, possessiveness. You don't own anybody. Occult involvement, false religions, maybe an uncontrolled tongue and even leading to sexual sins because we know molestation and uh, 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 those things happen in families and they're hidden. And so children will act out when those things are going on. Let's be careful. Let's watch this ancestral tree. These curses that come down through family lines. Let me say this. We don't have to follow after the bent of sin. We don't have to follow after that pattern of iniquity. You see, we can break the curse by not repeating the sin pattern. Huh? What we have to do is get with Jesus. Huh? Get Jesus in our heart. Huh? Get him in our mind. Get him in our heart, mouths. Let him change us from the inside out by the watching of the word, huh? by the regeneration of his spirit so that we won't keep repeating these sins. They don't have to happen. We must recognize the prevalent sin in our families and refuse to continue to follow in the patterns of our family members. I know for my family, one of the things is pride. Real big with education, uh, knowledge, and pride. But And let me tell you something. The scripture says knowledge puffs up. So when I get my big degrees, am I still humble? Huh? Do I still recognize that God is my source and resource and it's only because of him and him keeping me in my right mind that I was able to obtain the status that I have right now? Huh? Or do I say, oh, it's because of my studying. I studied so hard and I was so determined and I got tutors and I, 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 I. When you hear a lot of I, no pride is in the mix. <laughs> That's one way you can tell that pride is there is that you hear a lot of I. I, 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 it was all about who? Me, right. So then pride is, is running rampant. 
Uh, so be careful, beloved. You know, there's nothing wrong with higher education, but don't let it swell your head and make you think that you've made yourself because God has made us. Uh, he has allowed us to attain what we have attained so that we could bring him glory in the earth. Uh, it's all for his glory. Uh, it's all for his honor. So he could put to shame those that said you wouldn't make it. You wouldn't accomplish it. You can't do it. He wanted to shut their mouth. Uh, so get Give him praise. Give him the glory. I love when that young football player, they put him in in the game in the Alabama game. And he came out and he started talking about how he had to give the glory to God. He knew he couldn't throw that ball like that. God empowered him. God gave him the ability. And he recognized who his help was and where his help came from. And he gave him the honor and the glory. No matter how the media tried to twist what he was saying uh, and make him take credit. Uh, he refused to take the credit. Uh, and that's what God wants today. Uh, he wants some people uh, that will refuse to take the credit. Uh, that won't get the glory. Uh, that will say God helped me. Uh, God empowered me. Uh, God saw me through. Uh, God connected me uh, with who I needed to be connected to. Uh, it's because of him I live, uh, move and have uh, my very being. Uh, none of me and all of him. Uh, and and this is how, beloved, this is how we can overcome these trees, especially the pride one, especially that one. As a matter of fact, all of these trees, we have got to acknowledge God. We have got to connect with God in all our ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. It's a promise. He won't leave us hanging. He's not a man that he should lie, uh, nor the son of man that he should repent. Uh, beloved, if he said it, uh, you can believe it because that's it. That's it. His word is settled in the heavens. Now let it be settled in our hearts and let it flow from our mouths uh, because God's word can change any situation. But we must speak it. And not take it back by saying negative things, by allowing bitterness and self-rejection and hatred and fear and all these things to make be manifest and take control over us. I have two more trees. Hold on. Bear with me. This next tree, this is the tree of addiction. Many times we have addictions in our families uh, and sometimes just ourselves. Addictions can be the roots of them can be caused by jealousy abuse abuse will make people uh try to handle the situation so they medicate themselves so they can't feel anything and let me say something right there uh and this might help some of the people out there that deal with young people that cut themselves. I've been doing deliverance for probably about 15 years ministry. And uh, I ran into a situation with a young lady that cut a lot. Several young ladies, matter of fact, that they would cut themselves. And they would cut themselves because their emotions had been seared by abuse. And they couldn't feel anything. Oh God, have mercy. They couldn't feel anything anymore. So in order for them to have feeling, they would cut themselves so they could feel something. That's also part of Baal worship. And you can read about that in, I think, 2 Kings 18, where Elijah dealt with that spirit and they were cutting themselves. But that's a part of that, uh, is that abuse. Abuse will do it. Betrayal, grief, these things, being bullied, being abandoned will cause people to drink, cause people to use drugs. And I'm not justifying their use. I'm just saying that's at the root of it. So if you have family members that are drug addicted or, or, or have or alcoholism or, or over or just uh, eat too much or whatever it is, that's medication. They're medicating themselves. They're comforting themselves because they do not have the comforter, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, who is our comforter. Uh, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, and me and my father will come and we will make our home with you. We will be in you. The Holy Spirit will come and he will take a residence in us. He will comfort us. Uh, he will keep us. He will heal us. He will help us. He will lead and guide and direct us. Hurt, illness, all these things, loneliness, being cheated on. Come on, some women and some men, they have this 
this spirit on them that everybody cheats on them. They can't find nobody to be true to them. Whew. Beloved, we need to deal with, we got to deal with our hearts. Because we don't deal with our hearts, we're hurting people. We are hurting people and we're causing people to hurt themselves. We have got to deal with our hearts. So look at this. Out of this addiction tree comes isolation, codependency, because an addicted person is going to find somebody that's going to help them stay, stay, in their, stay addicted. They're going to find somebody that's going to feed them their habit. They're going to find somebody that's codependent. Suicide, damaged relationship, broken families, vandalism, huh? Self-mutilation, we just talked about that. Depression, distrust, eating disorders, problems with intimacy, even with God. Because we got to get, let him get in our heart to fix it. Per even perfectionism comes out of that one. So what's the remedy? The remedy is Jesus. <laughs> he is the name above every name. He can deal with our roots. He can deal with our roots so we bear good fruit. This is the answer, beloved. We must get in the word of God. If you are suffering from it, and see, this is the right tree. This is the tree that we should, this is what it should be. This should be the tree when we're, look at the root, in Christ. That's the answer, to be in Christ. Not to be around him, not to be, you know, near him, but to be in Christ, in him, submerged, surrounded, huh? In Christ, we must be in him, controlled by him. Because out of that is the fruit of the spirit. We just talked about that he would send us Holy Spirit, our comforter, who would come and live in us. And he would give us patience, the fruit, peace. Goodness, kindness, love, self-control, gentleness, and joy. This is what Holy Spirit brings, the whole package. It's one fruit off of this tree. This tree is Christ Jesus. Huh? We, he, is the, he is the vine and we the branches. All we need to do is say, Lord, I need you. We just got to be real, beloved. We got to be real. Real, real, real. Don't play. This is nothing. Your soul, your soul is at stake. Huh? Your soul is, I'm getting your shot. Your soul is at stake. We need to be real with God and say, Lord, I need you. I see these roots in me. I see addiction. I see bitterness. Huh? I see family curses. I see deception. I see these things in me. And I need you to forgive me. Huh? Come on, beloved. We need to repent. Huh? I renounce these things. I turn away from whatever it is. I turn away from it. I don't want it in my life anymore. I don't want it to control me. I'm sorry, God. I allowed this thing to take me over huh, and to control me and to make me do what it wanted to do when you were trying to get me to do what you needed me to do. Huh. I repent, God. I turn away from rejection. I turn away from pride. I turn away from my sexual sins. I turn away from family curses. I turn away from all of that and I receive you, Jesus. I want the fullness of all you have for me. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit. Give me the heart of flesh that you talked about in Isaiah. Take out this stony heart. I don't want it anymore. Hey, I want to be all you're calling me to be. I won't compare myself. I won't look at others, but I look to you because you made me fearfully and wonderfully. I'm unique. I am a one of a kind. I'm, a, I'm an only addition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, God is forgiving and merciful. He will sever the roots. We may need to fast, may need to go on a fast. Some things don't come out but by fasting and prayer that we have to deal with. So fasting is important to the believer because fasting breaks the yokes of wickedness. It undoes heavy burdens. Fasting does that. That means going without food. 
Sometimes we need to go farther than we're going right now. Like sometimes we'll go without social media or we'll go without, you know, I won't, I won't eat this type of food or that. But when you're desperate, desperate people do desperate things and desperate people can go without food. Try it till noontime. Push yourself. Then if you can do it till noontime, try it till three, try it till six, try 24 hours. Try it, beloved. Fight. This is a fight. This is a spiritual battle. You are in a fight for your soul. The enemy wants it. What did, what did Jesus tell Peter? He said, hey, Satan has desired you. And I'm telling you right now, Satan is desiring you. Huh? He want to sift you like wheat. Hallelujah. But I am going to pray. Hallelujah. Huh? And Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, huh? interceding for us that we will not fail, huh? that we will come to him, huh? that we will turn from these addictions and these things that are holding us down, huh? that we'll give up the pride. Huh? Jesus is interceding for us. Hallelujah. Huh? Thank you. And he has ministering angels sent on our behalf to help us walk this out. We don't have to do it alone. Maybe your church has resources where you can go and connect and get help, get the help you need. Beloved, if they don't, I'm happy. Uh, I do have messenger. I haven't deleted it. If you need some help and you don't connect and you don't have a church or you're not connected or your church doesn't have that. I'm happy to help you walk it out. I'm happy to help you get free from that bondage. Huh? That's what God calls us to do. Huh? He calls us to come alongside and disciple and to help those who can't help themselves until they can help themselves. Amen. That's what God calls us to do. So I thank you for tuning in today. I thank you for taking the time. If you would share this and help others to know that roots, roots birth fruit and that they don't want to see this fruit, these fruits birthed in their lives, except the last page, which is found in Christ. We want to birth the fruit of the spirit. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you for what our ears have heard and our eyes have seen. Now, God, we pray that you would supernaturally break the powers of the enemy from off your people. Help us to be mindful, God, that if we have roots of bitterness and anger and depression and sickness, oh God, and whatever it is that's in our heart that's causing us to produce bad fruit that you can correct it huh? that with you you can make the adjustment and the correction that's needed huh? that we can bring forth a good harvest huh? good fruit God that's good for others to eat off of huh? that they can in turn huh? bring forth a good harvest huh? so help us now God huh? as your people as your children huh? help us to know that you will come alongside of us huh? and that you would empower us huh? to break the chains of the enemy huh? that these kind can sometimes only come out huh? but by fasting and prayer. Huh? So we lift ourselves up to you huh? that you will make us mindful Holy Spirit. Huh? If we need to fast, let us fast. Huh? If we need to pray more, let us pray more. Huh? If we need to get more in our word, let us get more in our word. Huh? But whatever we do, huh? let us do it to the glory and honor of your great name. Huh? We thank you. Hallelujah. Huh? We praise you. Hallelujah. Huh? We bless you. Hallelujah. We give you great glory because you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and there's no power, no name greater than your name, no power greater than your power. Lord, to you be the glory, to you be the honor, and to you be all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen, beloved. I just had to come on and share that with you tonight. I know it was a little long, but it's been burning burning in my spirit. Roots birth fruit. We must know why we respond and why we do what we do. Why do, why do these things keep manifesting in my life? And it's because beloved, the fruit, the root is needs some work. It needs some fertilizing. It needs some tender care, some nurturing, and that can only be found in Christ. Well, I love you. God bless you. Y'all have a good night. Share the broadcast if you will. And I'll see you again when the Lord say, I'll see you again.